Krishna, Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Ram, Hari Ram, 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 Hari Hari. Yeah, welcome. Looks like we've got a few people here. Thank you for coming. So we'll chant for a little bit until somebody comes here. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, 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 Hari Hari, Hari Ram, Hari Ram, 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 Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram, Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hari Hari, Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram, Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hari Hari, Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram, Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hari Hari, Hari Ram, Hari Ram. Ram, Ram, Hari, 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hari, 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 Ram, Hari, Ram, 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 Hari, 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hari, 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 Ram, Hari, Ram, 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 Hari, 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hari, 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 Ram, Hari, Ram, 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 Hari, Hari. Okay, so um, I was going to read this, but you know what? We're going to read something else. Uh, we're going to go back to that chapter 10. Is it chapter 10 here? Oops, chapter 10. Yeah, chapter 10 of uh, Srimad Bhagavatam. I don't think we finished that uh, in first canto. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Ram. Whoops, didn't want to do that. Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. No, it's actually chapter chapter eleven. Lord Krishna is entrance into Dwarka. Let's see where we are. So we'll do this one, okay, uh, this is text 21. Uh, Lord Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, approached them and offered due honor and respect to each and every one of the friends, friends, relatives, citizens, and all others who came to receive him, to welcome him. Oh, by the way. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. 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 Jai Shiva Prabhupada, Jai Jesus Christ. Yeah. So, let's look for the. Uh, Word for word on that. Prava, by bowing, bowing his head, Abhavedana, by greeting with words, Asreya, Ash, uh, no, Aslesa, embracing, Kara, Sparsa, shaking hands, Smrita, Ikshka, uh, something, uh, by glancing, by glancing, smile, Asvasaya, by encouragement, Cha and Ava Pakalaya, uh, uh, down to the lowest rank of dog eaters. Varata, by benedictions. So, isn't it interesting how Lord Krishna 
reciprocates with everybody in like these individual ways. Everybody's got like a different relationship. Some he's very respectful to, more awe and reverence, because they feel that, oh, this is Krishna, oh my God. This is... And some glancing, like a little, maybe a little mischievous, like, oh, and the person, yeah, <laughs> something like that. But all these different relationships. I think this is what Jesus said. I have more to tell you about God, but I can't, you can't bear it yet. Huh? So uh, this kind of stuff, you know, just all these different relationships. And, and what, you know, it's amazing. We just read this verse I really like a lot. I just keep, keep ringing through my head. Uh, Krishna, you're the ultimate resting place for all living entities. What a perfect revelation of the Lord. He came uh, 5,000 years ago and showed himself. And then 500 years ago, he, the same Lord came again to uh, re reveal this nature of Krishna and how wonderful, uh, how wonderful he is. And you know, today I was, I'm going to share something confidential. Today I was, or yesterday, actually started yesterday. Yesterday, I was having little doubts. I was thinking, again, well, you know, where does Jesus fit in all this? You know, where does Jesus fit in all this? And I was thinking, you know, you know, how do I reconcile? You know, Jesus seems to be, you know, people uh, you know, say he's, he's the, uh, the son of God and, and everybody's getting so much juice and ecstasy. So many people are, and we're starting to get it. And they, well, you know, how does he fit in all these things? And, and uh, why am I attracted to this and also that, but not so much that anymore and all that? And then I woke up and I just re realized it's, it's all about attraction. Me? All about attraction. And I realized, just, oh, I see. I'm into Krishna because I'm just more attracted now to Krishna. You know, I mean... I, you know, there's, there was this little thing about betrayal still deep inside. I think some of you guys relate to this. Am I betraying Jesus if I come to Krishna? You know, <laughs> a little thing in there. And I just realized that actually Krishna works on attraction. Even Jesus Christ came to attract the living entities. Eh? Everything's about, it, you know, what is more attractive to you in this world? Eh? So... Um, so in my own journey, I realized, no, it's because of Lord Chaitanya and his philosophy. I mean, because I, I read the Bible, and it's good, it's very nice, wonderful things in there. Uh, yet this is more attractive, more deep, more and more inclusive and conclusive. And I just, you know, love that. So it's all based on attraction. It's the same thing, you know, the Vaidhi Bhaktas out there, um, they're attracted to Krishna according to rules and regulations, right? Uh, people coming here, they've kind of either been there, done that, feeling like, is there anything more? And now they're more attracted to this. And actually, because this is deeper, just naturally, we, it reveals the truth of why they're actually doing that. They don't know that. Because there's a bit of a blindness there because of association. Uh, it's all about us getting more and more attractive. You know, in uh, like, basically show people that, hey man, this is really great. You know, when they see that and you, they see like, oh wow, you really into that? <laughs> yeah, it's really more attractive, you know, to worship the God in this way. You know, it's all about, was somebody, Johan wrote something right there? Yeah. Some, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's what, it, you know, even Uddhava, when he went, that's okay, that's it. Um, when Uddhava went, was sent, actually was sent by Krishna to Vrindavan, he saw these gopis the way they worship Krishna, and it, it was more attractive than the way he was worshiping Krishna. He became attracted because he, had, he saw that way of worship and thought, wow, this is really amazing. Yeah. So he was favorable. He was favorable to that. And so then, therefore, he prayed. He just wanted to take that association so he could worship the Lord like that in some future time. Yeah. Yeah. So, so.
So, uh, in the lowest rank of dog eaters, so the Lord gives respect even to dog eaters. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, by benedictions, also as desired by the Almighty. So the Lord is naturally full of benedictions. Uh, see, people get benedictions uh, just worshiping Him on the Vaidhi platform also. You know, usually it depends on what you want. If you want Krishna deeply, He'll eventually or quickly give you the association of devotees who can give you this intimate relationship with the Lord. If you're attracted to that, okay? if you're attracted to some of the opulences of the Lord, like um, money, wealth, the external opulence, actually, they're not the internal, uh, wealth, fame, all that stuff, that's why you come to Krishna? Well, he'll give you that. He'll make you a guru. You, think, you don't think this was divinely ordained by Krishna, that these gurus are doing what they're doing, jumping the gun, even though they're not on this right standard? But the Krishna guru gives them what they want, you know? And, and there are people, they've been inspired along. You know, they, you can't say it didn't do any good. I mean, people are, uh, they're coming and they're inspired to the extent that they're inspired, you know? Um, speculation, on a neophyte platform, Prabhupada knew this, neophyte platform, it doesn't matter that much. You know? I mean, you just get people together and worship Krishna, you know? Because they can't understand these deeper things. So it's understood that would happen. But now, Prabhupada used a thing, he said, well, now we made a lot of devotees, let's boil the milk. Okay? So this is boiling the milk, because ultimately he wanted people to hear the Bhagavatam and become attracted to tasting this nectar of this eternal truth and be you know, deep into it. Yeah. See, chanting the holy name is fine. Doing sankirtan is fine. But if you, anybody wants to make it to the ecstatic platform, ultimately you have to do that in association with devotees who are ecstatic devotees and they don't associate with religion. See, this is all in the book. The book says, abandon all varieties of religion. Well, they're jumping up and down, chanting Hare Krishna in religion. Religion means hypocrisy. Naturally, there's going to be hypocrisy. There's going to be materialistic, motivated devotees, gurus, teachers, doing it because they want that. They want some a little bit of fame and name for worshiping Krishna. Okay? It's understood. But if, you, if we want to chant the holy name in ecstasy, we've got to follow the principles of Lord Chaitanya and clean up our association. Okay? That's why you see, I, I met a uh, kirtan guy in Mayapur, and he was so good at kirtan, they flew him. They paid his expenses to go to kirtans all over the world. And I thought, oh, this is a great opportunity. So I questioned him. I said, do you see any of those ecstatic symptoms that we read about in the books? You know, like Chaitanya Charitamrita, you know, the tears, the laughing, and any of those kirtans, choking, really uh, shaking, all these wonderful things. He said, no, I've never seen any of that. It's just nice to chant in this kind of night. We're all like, yeah, but I've never seen any of that. Tears, no. Okay? And I also, I look at YouTube videos, I'm looking, well, where's this... You know, they're all like, ah, Hare Krishna. Okay, that's nice, right? But it's not Prema Kirtan, is it? <laughs> so who's interested in Prema Kirtan? Well, that's kind of what's developing here. Prema Kirtan. You know. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Prabhupada says, uh, to receive, poor, poor, to receive the Lord, Krishna, there were all grades of population, beginning from Vasudev, Ugrasena, Gargamuni, the father and grandfather and teacher, down to the prostitutes and chandalas, who are accustomed to eat dogs. And every one of them was properly greeted by the Lord in terms of rank and position. 
as pure living entities, all are separated parts and parcels of the Lord, and thus no one is alien by his alien by his eternal relation. Such pure living entities are graded differently in terms of contamination of the material modes of nature. But the Lord is equally affectionate to all his parts and parcels despite material gradation. Okay. He descends only to re recall these materialistic living beings back to his kingdom and intelligent persons take advantage of this facility offered by the personality of Godhead to all living beings. So he appeared as Krishna and he actually delivered the saints. But not everybody was delivered. Only those who developed natural affection for the Lord, transcendental affection. Those prostitutes were developed, delivered. They had natural affection, but not everybody. Shishu Paul maybe got liberation, cut his, cut his head off. Jarasandha split in two, maybe liberation. Um, so the Lord came to do that. As Lord Chaitanya, see, it's a take advantage of the facility offered by the personality of Godhead to the living beings. So Prabhupada gave a facility, right? Rules, regulations, temple, worship, all that. So it's a, it's a facility to do that. So Prabhupada is also, by his instruction, giving facility again on the next le level. See, this is also here. Why? Because it's just here, man. It's here, it's ordered, the potency is here, people coming here, they're making very quick advancement. Okay. Okay. So the facility is offered. Who, who takes advantage of it is who takes advantage of it. Okay. No one is rejected by the Lord from the kingdom of God. And it remains with the living beings to accept this or not. See, no one. Anybody, like now, the message is, hey, you come here and you're going to make mega spiritual advancement. Hey, you'll, you'll understand what is the highest truth and distinguish from all levels of illusion, even in Vaidhi Bhakti, you'll be able to discriminate all that. Okay? So, it's up to people whether they take advantage of it or not. Right? It's free choice. Okay? But it's here. It's available. Okay? Huh. Accept this or not. So, people say, well, I'm accepting Vaidhi Bhakti, uh, I'm doing that way and I just speculate my understanding and that's good enough for me. Okay. But a new facility is being offered here. The facility to enter into ecstatic worship of Krishna. Those who come here, that is the goal. Okay. What is the goal in ISKCON and all that? Do they talk about... Uh, it's changed so much. Yeah. Now. People are changing, you know. And everything's just not clear, is it? Tradition, rituals, all that, but they're not clear. Like, where are you going, man? What's your goal? What's, what's, the, what's the highest goal? You know, it'd be a good question to ask. Why don't you ask some ISKCON people? I will if I see them. What's your goal in life? What do you want? Yeah, let's do that. Hey, man, what are you, what are you, what are you worshiping Krishna for? What do you want? Then the Lord personally entered the city accompanied by elderly relatives and invalid Brahmins and their wives, all offering benedictions and singing the glories of the Lord. Others also praised the glories of the Lord. Then the Lord personally entered the city accompanied by elderly relatives and invalid Brahmins with their wives all offering benedictions and singing the Lord, the glories of the Lord. Others also praised the glories of the Lord. When Lord Krishna passed over the public roads, all the ladies from the respectable families of Dwarka went up to the roofs of their palaces just to have a look at the Lord. 
They considered this to be their, the, the greatest festival. The inhabitants of Dwarka were regularly accustomed to look upon the reservoir of all beauty, the infallible Lord. Yet they were never satiated. See, infallible. Isn't that an amazing word? The infallible Lord. Okay. You know what people, unfortunately, there's a lot of imitation. People want to be infallible. Look at me, I'm really perfect. I'm a perfect devotee. To be a guru, you got to appear perfect, right? See? Are you spotlessly pure? Are you spotlessly pure? Hell no. <laughs> spotlessly pure. See, it's always attributed to the Lord. The Lord, one of his glories is he's the spotlessly pure one. He's the infallible Lord. Yeah? Sometimes he, he acts fallible. But it doesn't matter. It's still infallible in that fallibility. He acts like a human being sometimes and makes mistakes. Yeah? Yeah. But they're not real mistakes. They're just, it's just his nature to play with his devotees. But he's still invaluable, you know, just by thinking about him and his apparent fallibility. It charms the heart. Very attractive. You know, one of the best scenes I've, I really love is and it was like a funny joke, too, is he's making, I saw this in the movie, he gets to, um, um, he has to work off a debt and become the servant of Narada Muni. So Narada says, okay, I'm going to employ you as a cook. And Krishna says, oh, okay, great, you know. And so he's cooking japatis, and, and he makes these japatis, and, they, and he says, here you go, Narada, here's your food, man. Japatis and all this other stuff didn't turn out. They like dough balls to Japatis and nothing came out right. And I said, what kind of cook are you? Haven't you learned the basic cooking? He said, no. I, no I, everybody always cooks for me. I never cook for myself. I never learned. <laughs> See, fall, his fallibility is amazing. It's charming. And it's true, isn't it? And it's true. He never cooks for himself. As far as I never heard him. You ever heard Krishna cooking? Never. His mother's cooking. Brahmins are cooking for him. Everybody's cooking for him. And it's true. He just said, well, I never learned. It. Nobody's taught me. I just, they just, everybody just cooks for me. Hmm. Hmm. Has the Lord passed? Oh, oh, wait a second. I went too far. The Lord's chest in, in, is, is the abode of the goddess of fortune. His moonlike face is the drinking vessel for the eyes which hanker after all that is beautiful. His arms are the resting places for the administrative demigods, and his lotus feet are the refuge of pure devotees who never talk or sing of any other subject except his lordship. The Lord's chest is the abode of the goddess of fortune. His moonlike face is the drinking vessel for the eyes which hanker after all that is beautiful. His arms are the resting places for the administrative demigods, and his lotus feet are the refuge of pure devotees who never talk or sing of any other subject but his lordship. Okay, time for you. Get up and read. Oh. <laughs> I'm have a new reader. I'm a little running, I'm fasting, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna run out of gas at times. So I'll take care of this. Stand up. <laughs> there you go. Okay, where are uh, we? Uh, um, yes, right here. After entering the house of his father, he was embraced by the mother's, by the mother's present, and the Lord offered his obeisances unto them by placing his head at their feet. The mothers were headed by Devaki, his real mother. The mothers, after embracing their son, sat him on their laps. 
due to pure affection. Milk sprang from their breasts. They were overwhelmed with delight, and the tears from their eyes welted, wetted, wetted the Lord. Thereafter, the Lord entered his palaces, which were perfect in the fullest extent. His wives lived in them, and they numbered over 16,000. The queens of Lord Sri Krishna rejoiced within their minds to see their husbands home after a long period abroad. The queens got up at once after their seats, from their seats and meditations. As was socially customary, they offered their faces shyly and looked about coyly. The insuperable, the insuperable ecstasy was so strong that the queens who were shy first embraced the Lord in the innermost recesses of their hearts. They then embraced him visually and then they sent their sons to embrace him, which is equal to personal embracing. But, O oh chief amongst the brigas, though they tried to re restrain their feelings, they inadvertently shed tears. Although Lord Sri Krishna was constantly by their sides, as well as exclusively alone, his feet appeared to them to be newer and newer. The goddess of fortune, although by nature always restless and moving, could not quit the Lord's feet. So that woman can be detached from those feet, having once taken shelter of them. The Lord was pacified after killing those kings who were burdensome to the earth. They were puffed up with their military strength, their horses, elephants, chariots, infantry, etc. He himself was not a party in the fight. He simply created hostility between the powerful administrators and they fought amongst themselves. He was like the wind which caused friction between bamboos and so sparks of fire. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, out of his causeless mercy, appeared on this planet by his internal potency and enjoyed himself amongst competent women as if he were engaging in mundane affairs. Although the queen's beautiful smiles and furtive glances were all spotless and exciting, and although they could conquer Cupid himself by making him give up his bow in frustration, and although even the tolerant Shiva could fall victim to them, still, despite all their magical feats and attractions, they could not agitate the senses of the Lord. A common materialistic condition souls speculate that the Lord is one of them. Out of their ignorance, they think that the Lord is affected by matter, although he is unattached. This is the divinity of the of the personality of Godhead. He is not affected by the qualities of material nature, even though he is in contact with them. Similarly, the devotees who have taken shelter of the Lord do not become influenced by the material qualities. The simple and delicate women truly through thought that Lord Sri Krishna 
their beloved husband followed them and was dominated by them. They were unaware of the extent of the glories of their husband as the atheists are unaware of him as the supreme controller. Ah. I pressed that button to go to the next page and this came up. Okay. Are we 12 or 9? No, no. Is this? Okay, let's go. Chapter 12, yeah, okay. Yeah, birth. Yeah, okay. Chapter 12. Oh, because now we're on chapter 12. Chapter 12, birth of Emperor Parikshit. The sage Sanaka said, the womb of Uttara, mother of Maharaj Parikshit, was spoiled by the dreadful and invincible Brahmastra weapon released by Ashvatthama. But Maharaj Parikshit was saved by the Supreme Lord. How was the great Emperor Parikshit, who was a highly intelligent and great devotee, born in that womb? How did his death take place? And what did he achieve after his death? Oh, that's good. We, Chapter 5 of um, this, Chapter 5 of Srimad Bhagavatam 1.5. Srimad Bhagavatam 1.5. Narada's instructions on Srimad Bhagavatam for Vyasadeva. Text 1. Sutta Goswami said, Thus the sage amongst the gods, Narada, comfortably seated, and apparently smiling, addressed the rishi amongst the brahmanas, Vas Veda Vyas. Addressing Vasudev, the son of Parashara, Narda inquired, Are you satisfied by identifying with the body or the mind as objects of self-realization? Your inquiries are full and your studies were also very fulfilled. And there is no doubt that you have prepared a great and wonderful work, the Mahabharat, which is full of all kinds of Vedic sequences, elaborately explained. You have fully delineated the subject of impersonal Brahman, as well as the knowledge derived therefrom. Why should you be despondent in spite of all this, thinking that you are undone, my dear Prabhu? Sri Vasudev said, all you have said about me is perfectly correct. Despite all this, I am not pacified. I therefore question you about the root cause of my dissatisfaction. For you are a man of unlimited knowledge due to your being the offspring of one Brahman who is self-born without mundane father and mother. My see yeah, see, this is very interesting. See, Brahma was self-born. So a lot of people, they, they look at this... Um, uh, oh yeah, Brahma just came from the navel of Vishnu and was self-born, you know, from the navel of Vishnu. But actually, the practical, he was, he was born uh, from the self. The true self is Krishna. Okay? And then when, we, when one realizes the true self, Krishna, one realizes their actual position okay? and actual service. Just like Brahma, he, he didn't know what to do. 
He was, uh, you read Bhagavatam, he was just, he just heard this word like Abram, tapas, tapas, do tapas. So he did tapas for 100 celestial, uh, 100 celestial years, which is a lot, <laughs> more than we can imagine. So, and then he realized Krishna when tears came to his eyes, actually. He realized Krishna. It took him 100 celestial, 100, uh, celestial years, thousands, thousands of years, maybe millions um, solar years. And so he realized Krishna when tears came to his eyes. Look how easy Lord Chaitanya is making it this time. Yeah? We don't have to go through that, especially when you get the mercy of, um, of his associate that here to spread this. So self-born really means, the esoteric meaning is he's born of Krishna. He's born of Krishna. But how can you be born of Krishna now? See, if uh, uh, born of Krishna means you see Krishna and you develop affection for Krishna. If you're, you know, if you're purified. Some people, they develop hate for Krishna. And contaminated. So anyway, the practical way people are self-born now, because we got to be self-born if we're going to be a, a relative of Krishna. Right? So we got to be self-born. So the way we're self-born is that's why the Vedas are here. See, the Vedas were left so that we could become self-born. So you got to hear the confidential um, explanation of the Vedas from a self-born person who is either born of, of the, uh, the word in this life or a previous one. Just like Jesus in the book of John, it said Jesus came to his own, but most rejected him. But whoever received him, received his word, his teaching, were cleansed and they were born of the word. See, the word is God. In the beginning it was the word, the word was with God, the word was and is and always will be God. That's the, uh, what do you call it, the non-speculative version. The as-it-is version, that's Krishna. Not, so you speculate, you spoil it. You poison it. And that's the problem. Uh, it, the word is not, is not potent because of speculation. So that's why you have to hear, if, uh, if you want deliverance in this life, you have to hear from the empowered devotee who is empowered to see that real word by revelation and and it's in line with the revealed scriptures okay so and that's and then you can get out when you're ready to be delivered and that's that's the transcendental game going on right now because whoever you notice it, it's it, it's it works you know like this one lady is a good example of, of the illusion she says hey man rupa goswami told me to correct you and, and and when I see Krishna, I cry, so I'm an authority. Okay? So I said, well, okay. Um, so Rupa goes, so, so how do we know? She says, you just got to believe I'm a self-realized person. I said, okay, well, then you got to, uh, I mean, a lot of people, a crazy person can say that. So what are, what are the fruits, man? You know, okay, so get up and show us something. Otherwise, you know, why can we take you seriously? Get up and show that you're conclusive from all this ecstatic worship you so-called do. You know, if you're if if Rupa Goswami is your buddy, you should be able to make a video and you don't have to cry because you know. Of course, we know uh, uh, um, Rupa Goswami doesn't like people to cry for Krishna because that's whatever that's been spread around. So just give us conclusive understanding from all that crying you've been doing. So. You think she'll do it? Probably not. No. So that's the thing. Otherwise, how do we know if a person's lying or not? It's the same thing with these gurus. If a guru is saying, yeah, I'm guru, I'm bona fide, uh, well, what's your proof? Well, you know, we got around and I was voted in. I followed the morning program. I chanted my 16 rounds. Huh. Maybe, yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, so this all these external things, but is that the real conclusive standard? Yeah, again, what is it? What is it? If uh, the real standard is the real, I mean, does anybody want to be delivered in this life? You know, you know, because being delivered means you have to follow the real process. 
You can jump up and down in these kirtans. Oh, look at us. And you get in a frenzy with everybody else jumping up and down. Um, uh, and, then, and then you still may not be delivered because you're not ecstatic. Because you're in that association with people that are, you know, rubbing shoulders with envious persons still. They're not purified. Um, so we have to follow the process. And Prabhupada wanted people, uh, yeah, chanting Hare Krishna is very important. But if you want to be delivered and be, go to the spiritual world in this life, it's all in the Bhagavatam. You know, that's how Shukadeva Goswami got it. He heard the sound vibration from the devotee was purified. That's how people became saints in uh, Jesus' time and it's continued on. But they became saints in three years. They got the spirit of devotion qualifying them to go into the kingdom of God. But here we have in Iskon and all these other uh, places, if you're having kirtan and you're not uh, ecstatic to the point of tears and choking and all these symptoms of liberated souls, you're not delivered yet. Yeah. So those Christians 2,000 years ago got delivered simply because they heard from Jesus for three years. Not from them jumping up and down. No, they got the spirit of devotion first. They, that's deliverance when there's such a person here. Okay? And then you can jump up and down all these things. Until that point, you're getting like some kind of sukriti because you're chanting with a fence still. Mm. And you can get liberation. You know, liberation is there. But, you know, our, our, our movement is meant for so much more. It's meant for pure devotion so that we go to Vrindavan. You want to live in Vrindavan? You know, that kind of thing. So we have to have those ecstatic symptoms. Otherwise, we, how can we go? See, it's not, we're still mundane. See, so you got to be self-born of the real self. And that, that word comes out of the empowered devotees. And that's why you see results here. People say, are you qualified? Well, what's your qualification then, Gohari? Well, I just speak what I speak of what I'm realizing from this way of worship, it's all uh, confirmed in the book. And just from doing this, people that are really listening seriously are, are developing liberated system, symptoms and, and showing that they're qualified to enter the kingdom of God. Okay? So that's the qualification and that's in the book. Lord Chaitanya said, yes, it's correct. Those who awaken devotion to Krishna are certainly in spiritual master. So that, and that's why I say, well, Prabhupada also confirmed it, and Krishna did also. But they're actually, the fruits, you got to see the fruits. Otherwise, um, I could be like that lady saying, oh, I saw Rupa Goswami, and I, you know, I'm self realized, and I cry, and I could say all this bullshit, you know. And, and people believe, could believe it. See? So. Uh, we need solid, substantial confirmation of these things, yeah, and that's that's what we that's what we got here, yeah. you know. And and it's important because if people will understand, if they will listen to some of these classes, they'll say it's real. See, it's real conclusive. It's really logical. It's very clear, mm -hmm. and it's really according to the book. You know, it's not like we don't follow the book. We follow it better than anybody else out there. Mm -hmm. That's just on the Vaidhi platform because people are being delivered already. The more, it's like the Vishnu Dudas, they had a, um, you know, stand up a little bit since I just move aside. You can stand too. Yeah. Like the Vishnu Dudas, uh, the Vishnu Dudas, they came from the spiritual world and they had a uh, debate with the, with the uh, Yamadudas. The Yamadudas in a lower consciousness, you know, in the modes of nature. And they were servants of the demigods like Yamaraj. See, so, so they, were, they were servants of karma. You know, uh, and if you did good deeds or bad deeds, usually people are a mixture, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so when we die, if you're in a karmi, what they call karmi, karma, then you're taken there to Yamaraj. You have the symptoms of being a karmi. Well, I, you know, I've got to tell you guys, many, most, 
Vaishnavas are still at the level of karma. Karma. They even believe in it. They believe in astrologers. They believe in the New Age movement. See, speculation. They believe in uh, liberation. They believe in, um, in uh, self-development stuff. They believe in doing good deeds and, and getting good results. I mean, not bad to do good deeds. It's nice to do. But, but they believe that's going to deliver them. They believe in uh, renunciation and austerities and fast is going to deliver them. It's just a step. Okay? So if you die like that and you have the, um, the uh, symbols of, of being a devotee, but you're still not ecstatic, well, you're still under Yamaraj. Yeah? If you, I mean, this, everybody can test themselves. How, how, how much taste do you have for chanting these verses in Bhagavatam. You know, how does it, it thrill you? Do you? Does it bring sometimes tears to your eyes? Do you choke up? Do you, do you feel like you're in love with this book? Now you can test yourself. Because if that's not there, according to the book, you're not qualified to enter the kingdom. They, Lord Brahma says in Srimad Bhagavatam, those who invent the symptoms of ecstasy, tears in the eyes, choking the voice, a, uh, uh, hair standing on the end, various symptoms like this, uh, they're qualified to enter the kingdom of God. Okay? And if you have that, some, if you say like some of my students say, yeah, I felt that, now I'm gone. Your thing is, hey, you need to develop that here. It doesn't develop well amongst Vaidhi Bhaktas because they're against it. They're against ecstasy. Most of them are against it. That means they're not qualified for the real holy name. They can chant Krishna, Krishna, but where is the, 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 the bhakti, the devotion, Radharani, is this bhakti, this devotion. If they see it, they run away. Yeah, or, or criticize it often. Okay, so deliverance is, is that. And, even, and then uh, Yamaraj says, oh, don't touch the devotees who are purified, don't bring them to me. Bring me those who don't relish the honey of the nectar of the lotus feet of the Lord. See? So we got to taste this honey. If we can't, then we're uh, diseased still. See? And we still got to go to before Yamarash. Yeah, yeah, because because you're into the you just you see people. This calls still hypocrisy. You you say, yeah, I'm a devotee. I, I want to go to the kingdom of God and everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then a devotee comes to reclaim you, and that's how the Lord does it. It's right there in the book, chapter one, Adi Lila. When you're ready to be delivered, you meet the pure devotee, and 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 by the action of the real Bhagavatam, not the speculative version by gurus who don't worship the Lord in mellows and loving ecstasy by the action of the book Bhagavad and the devotee Bhagavad absorbed in the mellows of devotion you get the as it is truth and it starts to awaken bhakti in you see that's how it works always work like that otherwise you've got some speculative version taught by your gurus who don't they're not self-realized they can't help you very well so the, the, this is like it's an opportunity. We read the opportunity. There's a facility here now for deliverance. The order came from Prabhupada. Krishna's blessing came, told my second disciple, you got my darshan because of your guru. Okay, so that's there. So it's, and, and then people, may, oh, they say, I don't believe you. This is a word. Well, and then we got the fruits. The fruits by the, by the fruits they shall be known. The fruits of those who take our, this word seriously, ecstatic devotion is awakening. Devotional mellows, tears, crying. Are you crying a lot? Still? I do if, if I focus and, and mm. get into the Leela. Yeah. Or Great. chanting, if I really get into the chanting. Great. And Good. I can yeah. cry for Krishna. All right. Yeah, so you making progress. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so that's the path. That's self-born. You got to be born of the self. And that's the word. See, the self is, the self-born is a person. They've been born again. You know, the, the, the Lord is living inside them. 
Me? Therefore, they can look at this and the Lord says, hey, you see this? Isn't that nice? And they, yeah, man. Thank you, Lord. Man, I love this. This is so relishable. They, and they tell you that word that they've realized because of their intimacy with God. That's it in a nutshell. You want to be delivered? That's your kind of guru, man. Very rare. Anyway, that's facilities all here. This is the real disciplic line. You come in this door and you, you, you come in seriously and really listen seriously, you'll be delivered. You'll see. Try it. Try it for two months and see if you make more advancement than you've done in 40 years. Is that the, what That's happened here? That's exactly what happened to me. Come into the thing. Oh, yeah. People see you, man. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> 40 years, you know, it's like after a class. How do you feel after the class? Do you feel like, wow, I want more. Wow, that made sense. That's like amazing. That's, or is it like, oh, God, I'm glad that class is over, mm -hmm. which happened a lot with my uh, experiences within the institution because mm -hmm. so many of the speakers were not even qualified. You know, it might just be the temple president who was just, you know, just reading and he didn't share anything or give you anything. There was no gifts to give. So it's like, how do you feel after one of these classes? Do you mm -hmm. want more? Do you? It's like, wow, that's, mm -hmm. that makes more sense than anything I've heard. I need to hear more. Mm -hmm. I need to hear more. I need to hear more. Mm -hmm. And that's basically what happens almost always here. Mm -hmm. Always. That's, that's it. If you, if you have to become attracted to Harikata, Attractive to conclusive truth. Still, you know, contamination means you're still attracted to speculation. People, if you have a guru that's been speculating because they don't worship the Lord in ecstatic devotion and have the right understanding, they're naturally going to speculate. And if you believe that opinion over a person who does worship the Lord in ecstatic uh, devotion, that's not very smart, but people do it. That's called contaminate. You're contaminated. That's why Prabhupada said, don't listen to my God brothers, don't read their books, don't go to their classes. You may get contaminated. So you listen there, and he's, you know, he's a pure devotee, he's very different. Why would he say that? Unless there is, it's a different level. See, they're speculating, still. Because you've got to be specially empowered by Krishna with real pure devotion like he was. He was set apart. A lot of people say, oh, they're all the same, and that's baloney. No, this is just... Speculation. Okay? That's why I say you're gonna, you want to uh, mix with all that, the God brothers and this, and that. Well, you're going to have, you're going to see, you just be a little bit mixed up. Mixed up, <laughs> you know, you're mixed up, and mixed up. If you're okay, you know, yeah, grab by and by, everything will work out. If you just stick here, try to stick here. Okay, there you go. Yeah, I'll put it back. Okay. My Lord, everything that is mysterious is known to you because you worship the creator and destroyer of the material world. Okay. That's a good one. <laughs> oh, you know, I, don't know. I have a big, I have a loud mouth. I don't really need this. See, everything is, this is the mystery. Everything is mystery, uh, mysterious, where is it now? Right here, everything that is mysterious yeah. is known. Yeah. My Lord, everything that is mysterious is known to you because you worship the creator and destroyer of the material world and the maintainer of the spiritual world. See, you know it doesn't say creator of the spiritual world, does it? Because it, it's always been, it never, <laughs> never gets destroyed. But this world is created and destroyed. Okay? And so when Vedivyas realized the Lord, he realized the, uh, the spiritual world, spiritual energy, side by side with the material, under full control of the Lord. Okay? Now, see, he worshipped the Lord, but not just worship on the level of Vaidhi. There is not like just, well, I'm just doing the rules. Okay, that's a beginning. 
but he worshiped from his heart, from the awakened heart. See, and then the mysteries are revealed. See? And so most persons, because you've got to be an unalloyed, loving devotee. You, this is a very high thing. It's not one you get even from sadhana bhakti. It's not something you get from austerities, renunciation, or sadhana. It's very rare. See? And devotees don't know that. Because the only way you can understand these mysteries is to be an unloyed devotee. That's why they're sent here. They have to be. It's too, too difficult to attain that. See? Uh, and that's the problem, especially once, see, like Prabhupada was a pure devotee. He comes here. But he didn't come here to teach verbally the confidential meaning of his own books. But he wrote it down in there. Bhakti Vinod also. Bhakti Siddhanta also. They knew there will be a time where now this kicks in what Jesus talks about and with the Bhagavatam time. It's a whole reason. Jesus said only the Father knows the Son and the Son knows the Father. Okay, same thing in Vaishnava, only the friend uh, knows the super friend and like this, both. It's a reciprocal. Why? Because of unalloyed devotion. That's the only way to know the Lord. Therefore, the mysteries are revealed to them. But what about the poor persons in this world? How are they going to know these mysteries? That's why Jesus said, the Father knows the Son, the Son knows the Father, and the Son can reveal the Father to whom he chooses. See? So whoever is chosen, chosen means the Lord inspires like her 40 years. Okay, go to Gohari. I listen to the Oh, this is what I'm looking for. Amina also and others. And so the son or the intimate friend in Vaishnava lingo, the intimate friend of Krishna, reveals these confidential mysteries and you get, it's like being fed by the father-mother that way. Food. This is all, this is prasadam. Mm -hmm. This is a prasadam that the devotee has been relishing and they feed it to you. Otherwise there is no other way to understand these mysteries on your own, not qualified. It would take you, you know how long it took for um, uh, Vasudev and Devaki to realize Krishna? 60,000 celestial years. That's how long you got, man. And that's what they're teaching. Oh yeah, many lifetimes before you'll realize Krishna, because you need Prema to do that. Oh, many lifetimes before. They're still teaching that. Narayan Raj taught that. I was listening to that. I heard it in my own ears. And still, that's why people didn't get it, because that's what is teaching. And Prabhupada also, I mean, he taught things like, hey man, he said, yeah, do these rules and regulations, but at least he said, wait for the mercy. Some you may hope for the mercy of a devotee. Hope for the mercy of a devotee. Because he knew when that mercy comes, it comes in the form when you're ready to be delivered, you're really just finally open to hearing good sense. See? Look at this. All those Vaishnavas out there, they could be delivered in this life, but the opportunity is here, but they can't take it yet. See? But anybody convinced to take this opportunity, you just saved the soul many births. Because you've got to become an ecstatic devotee to be delivered. That's what the books say. That's why Prabhupada wants us to understand these books. That's why you've got to hear it from a devotee. Because the Ritviks don't know this. And neither do the living gurus. They don't worship the Lord in loving ecstasy. This is all in the book. That's why Prabhupada knew. He said, yeah, chant Hare Krishna. Jump up and down. But someday you've got to understand this Srimad Bhagavatam. And how to be delivered. Because it's all in these books. Otherwise, you'll be jumping up and down until your last breath and you'll be a little excited and feel okay and everything, but no tears squirting out of your eyes. Look at these people. Sometimes in five videos or one video, tears start squirting out of your eyes. So where is the real path now? Where is the real opportunity to go to Vrindavan? Where is that? Right here and nowhere else. Have you seen? I haven't seen any place like that. This, that's why Prabhupada did come here. He came to me in that lucid dream and his order is true and not just a pipe dream. And Krishna did come to my disciple and said because of her guru she got darshan. Even after a week of him being around Krishna, didn't know anything about Krishna. 
And this is happening again and again, stuff like that here. Everybody's spiritual gifts are awakening. See? You just got to get out of the bamboozlement of the illusionists. Illusionists are teaching something else other than this, what's in Prabhupada's books. This is the basis of our preaching. This is the basis of our Sangha, is what we're doing here. That's a solid basis, man. It is a firm foundation. Their foundation is going to fall down because it's speculation. It ain't going to stand, man. No potency in it, just a bunch of fluff, show bottle stuff, running around the stage, look at me and my big friggin' stick, BFD, look at me, I'm a Prabhupada disciple. Yeah, how much have you realized about Krishna? How ecstatic are you? Well, we don't know anything about that. Well, you just go around, you're a big Prabhupada disciple, and you're not qualified to enter the kingdom of God. How spiritually advanced should be the question. How spiritually advanced is this Prabhupada disciple according to the standard in the book? How spiritual advanced are these people here according to the standard of the book? The yeah, standard is, yeah. Do you, do you, are, you, are you doing devotional service at least in ecstasy, in bhav or prem? Or what are you doing? You got ruchi? Oh, we don't talk about that. That's so high. We're still trying to get out of Narta Nirviti. Oh, you haven't heard of the mercy of Lord Chaitanya that comes through a real associate of Lord Chaitanya that is sent here and empowered to deliver people? You haven't heard of that? Well, hey man, how loud do we have to speak it? <laughs> it's true though. <laughs> don't... Look at my laugh. <laughs> I'm being very serious here, too. <laughs> where, where were we? Anything else? First verse. First. first verse. Every mysterious scene known to you, the Creator, the story. Yeah, right on. The original personality of God is transcendental to the three modes of nature. Yeah. Are you transcendental modes of nature? That's a question, you newcomers here. Are you transcendental? <laughs> then next question, do you want to be? Come and listen to these things. Great entertainment. Just come for the entertainment. <laughs> you know, you can be doubter, whatever. You Just come just to get your popcorn and enjoy the show. It's not show bottle because you're going to see something here. You're going to feel something here. You're going to hear something here of substance, man. You're going to be dazzled. You're going to be... <laughs> <laughs> you won't be cheated. You I'll tell be, you that. And you, you won't, won't be, be bored. Cheated. You won't be cheated. You won't and be you won't cheated. be bored. <laughs> no. No. You won't be cheated. I have. Oh, you got it. Okay. I go have. Ahead, go ahead and read some. Okay. Who is transcendental to the three modes of material nature? Like the sun, your goodness can travel everywhere in the three worlds. And like the air, you can penetrate the internal region of everyone. As such, you are as good as the all-pervading supersoul. Please, therefore, find out the deficiency in me, despite my being absorbed in transcendence under disciplinary regulations and vows. Sri Narada said, you have not actually broadcast the sublime and spotless glories of the personality of Godhead. That philosophy, which does not satisfy the transcendental senses of the Lord, is considered worthless. Although great, although Great sage, you have very broadly described the four principles. See, yeah. See, you have not... Where's the verse? Right here. Okay. okay. Although you have... You see, although great sage, you have very broadly described the four principles beginning with religious performances. The four principles. I don't know exactly what they mean. Four, four principles. Didn't say. Yeah. Uh, but anyway... Vaidhi Bhakti, you described Vaidhi Bhakti, a Varnashram system, oh, four principles, probably uh, the four castes systems like that, Varna and Ashram. See, beginning, uh, beginning with religious firmness. 
you have not described the glories of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. See? So that's done really elaborately in the 10th canto. But why didn't he start there? See? Well, you have to read the first cantos, uh, not only, all the preliminary cantos, more or less. You have to know the essence of them. And I'll just tell you the essence of them. They're all again, over and over again, that this confidential knowledge, these mysteries, are passed on from the, uh, spiritual master to disciple, empowered spiritual master. Okay? That means you have to hear submissively and surrendered, in a surrendered mood, to hear these, these glories of the Lord. See, so a lot of this stuff is to get the person in the right line. See? Because it doesn't, you got to know, well, what is a guru? What is their qualification? See? Why should you listen to them? You know, why should you serve them? Yeah. And not serve somebody else? And what are the disqualifications of the bona fide guru? Of the, uh, what do you call The, let's say, bogus guru. Uh, the unqualified, the lesser quality guru. Okay? Because we have the, a lot of those out there. See? Mm -hmm. So this is part of the glories uh, uh, elaborately, uh, uh, the elaborately the, uh, the glories of the Supreme Person of Godhead. And so everything is basically to get, devote, get persons to listen to a realized soul. And people don't know how to distinguish one. That's the whole problem. They don't know the symptom. A liberated soul has these eternally liberated symptoms. And they're very conclusive because of it. You can hear, if you hear enough, you, then you can compare it to these other teachers and gurus and see, you know, they're so inconclusive, so speculative, and they can't confirm practically anything in the book. They just can't. And you don't know that because you haven't seen better. You haven't heard better. That's the more important thing. You haven't heard anything better. That's why you got to hear. Jesus even said, you are clean by the word I've spoken to you. He said, the, the glories of the kingdom of God are, are being given to you, but not them out there. Because they didn't follow him. He had multitudes out there. Just came for a healing, man. See, motivated. Oh yeah, give us a healing. Thank you very much there, Jesus Christ. Where are you going? Oh, I'm hitting the road down there with my disciples. Okay, have a good time because I, I got to go back here and I got a family and I got uh, the, uh, my business and all that. And back then, see, they didn't have cameras and, and TV uh, or not, well, TV, um, Facebook Live and all that stuff. So they couldn't stay in contact. So anyway, it was just a seed sown there. So here we got these facilities. Yeah. So the first thing to get everybody is in line first. Otherwise, people sometimes they come here, actually often. Well, tell me something about Krishna, all like that. Tell me something about Krishna. Are you a surrendered disciple here? Oh, no, I didn't come here. I just come here for the association, you know. I have a guy many years he was sitting here. Uh, are you a surrendered disciple? Oh no, I just, I have my own guru elsewhere, you know. I just come here for the association with ecstatic devotees. I pick up the energy, and then when you're not looking, I come and I screw it up with your disciples. Okay? Mm -hmm. Oh, what kind, of, what kind of thing is that? No, get out of here, man. Go somewhere else. Okay? No, you got to get in line, man. The line is, hey man, the line is here. We, gotta, we teach that right. And you guys got to teach it too, man. Don't be out there all ecstatic. Oh, look at me. Ah. And, but, uh, yeah, yeah, but you know, you got to come through the guru and everything. And you never, you never, oh, well, I can't say never. But you got to prove what you, why they should do and use our books to do it. You know, like here, you show them in the verse. You see it right here, man. You see this ain't in there. They say in there, Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhuranja Lila. You want to show, you better prove, you should prove your ecstasy now. You know, not just, just say it now. You got to have it come back to the lower cantos, man. Start again. Why? I've been going over and over this stuff for years. You know, help your brothers. You're into preaching? Well, that's how you do it. You got to convince them based on the scriptures. Show that you know more about these scriptures than their gurus do. Just for their sake, the guru's sake, and their disciples. So some we can fit into the kingdom of God in this life while we're here. 
and make more real disciples to pass this on to future generations. Otherwise, what's going to be passed on? All that, right? All that you want to see that? You want to see Vaidhi Bhakti and again, hypocritically devout people, they can't get out of it. They're stuck in it simply because nobody's preaching things as they are. People have been reading Prabhupada's books. Show them that you know Prabhupada's books. Don't be bad. And I've even seen some of the ecstatic ones reading from the Majalila. They don't understand. You don't understand. You're not ready. I don't care how ecstatic you are. Get back there to chapter one of Adi Lila. Hey man, the Christians have been delivering people just saying Jesus is right there. Jesus is the son of God. He's been born, you know, died, died death and then he resurrected over and over again and delivering people. We have so much in the lower cantos. Get them in line. They, and you'll feel it great. You'll say, wow, this is amazing. You'll be able to speak really nice. You don't have to always, well, you know, look at me, you know. And then you're higher, and then you still don't know, understand that stuff yet. It takes time. See? So here, we're preaching, the whole thing is served by regular classes in Srimad Bhagavatam. You get that here. And by service of the devotee, man. What is the mission here? The mission here, my mission here ordered by Prabhupada, is to help deliver his disciples, man. We're all from that group, Morley. So show them that you know something what you're talking about. Your ecstasy is real, you're conclusive, so you take out these basic books, even Bhagavad Gita, and give them the devotional purport. Okay? And then you'll see, things will really change. Otherwise, you just look like a sahaja, you know, literally. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh, you know, okay, that's fine. But hey, you say you want to preach? Well, this is how you do it. I, mean, I just got a revelation on that, so. Yeah. Yeah, get back to the lower cantos and you'll see it'll, it'll have a big effect because then people will be able to follow you. Otherwise, you're way so far, you know. And then you'll know, see it'll be great. So you got to mix it up. Don't say it's not all or nothing. You can do some of that, you know. And, and, but, you know, because I do also. But you got to come back to this here. It's important. It's very inspiring, man. Mm. Ross isn't always like, ah, yeah, yeah, ah, you know. It's also very inspiring to preach. Yeah. Okay. Uh, where were we? Although. Oh, yeah. Although. Yeah. You have, you have not described the glories of the Supreme Lord. So, again... He, needed, he did it in the book, but you got to come in line and hear these glories from a devotee. Okay? So get everybody in line, as many as we can, and then, and then we can, uh, we'll just naturally go into the deeper cantos like this and explain these things. And sometimes, see, I go into the deeper cantos, but often I just go and I explain all these things according to, because the deeper cantos, it shows the path also. But, you know, it takes time to do that. Okay, go ahead. Those words which do not describe the glories of the Lord, who alone can sanctify the atmosphere of the whole universe, are considered by saintly persons to be like onto a place of pilgrimage for crows. Yeah, you see, Krishna is very practical, too. He's very practical. And so he's looking according to time, place, and circumstance. And those glories are not, well, let me just tell you about 10th Canto. I was in groups like, here, tell you about 10th Canto, and, and, and higher, and rupas, and then snatas, and then memorizing that, and everybody still doesn't know. Krishna is very practical. The glories of the Lord is Guru Tattva, man. Find the door. They've been doing 2,000 years to get people liberated in, in Christianity. You know, and it works. Same thing here. Let's get people liberated, man. They got to just walk through the door and they're going to get boon after boon after boon. The Krishna's practical, not just like, uh, what do you call, jump uh, all, all the way over the truth. Hey, that's cheap. That's a hajja. No, just go through the door and because you guys are witnesses, you can do that. You tell them by your experience, I walked through the door and, and this is how you get there and then you'll start to relish the name and the pastimes, you'll hear the bliss 
coming, you know, from the conclusive understanding of my Gurudev, and you start getting, you know, you, you convince them, show their, their you're, you're like transcendental salesmen and women out there. Convince them that you got a product that is worth more than all their bullshit that they're you know, engaged in out there. You know, like that. So this is one of the main glories of the Lord now, is very practical. Teach them about Guru Tattva, about going through the door in and, 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 and like a submissive and surrendered way so that they can get what you guys got. Okay? Those words which do not describe the glories of the Lord, who alone can sanctify the atmosphere of the whole universe, are considered by saintly persons to be like onto a place of pilgrimage for crows since the all perfect persons are inhabitants see, again see those words what are people talking about you notice that they they were see we're we're actually servants of krishna and the highest bliss and ecstasy is to talk about krishna to talk about the path talk about the philosophy of krishna you know meditate on that okay? otherwise what are we meditating on contamination people talk blah 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 crows man talking about the world blah 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 or even in uh, in these religion religion what are you talking about blah 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 dude blah 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 they, are they talking about the glory they don't even know the real glories of the Lord that's why it's so inspiring when you you get these revelations from ecstatic worship to tell people the truth it's very inspiring enlivening to the soul because you enliven the supreme soul and automatically you become enlivened. He loves topics like this. Okay. Okay. But people of the world, you know, they still have this habit of talking about bullshit, man. Nothing, talking about that, this, that, blah, blah, blah. You know, and therefore they get disempowered. They don't know this. Okay? That's why they got to come and hear the glories of the Lord from the bona fide guru. Even, even in the world, you know, in the religion, they still materialistic devotees. I see them on Facebook all the time talking about mundane stuff. Mundane stuff, man. Interested in mundane stuff. Talking about karma and again and again being a vegan and talking about, you know, food and this and that and, and dogs and a cute little dog. Look at the cute and look at it. And women, you know, sort of showing everything, you know. Uh, and they're a devotee. See, that's called materialistic devotees. And they'll stay that way until they meet the real guru who shows them something different. Gets them attracted to hearing Harikata for real and not just a show. Oh, it's time to go see Guru Dave. He's so charismatic. Oh, he's so good. And we have a nice little kirtan and all that. It's so nice. And that's all it is, is just a nice thing. <laughs> Since the all perfect person. How do you are... like the show, guys? <laughs> New show. <laughs> I like to sit and watch. <laughs> Since the all-perfect persons are inhabitants of the transcendental abode, they do not derive any pleasure there. On the other hand, that literature which is full of descriptions of the transcendental glories of the name, fame, forms, pastimes, etc., of the unlimited Supreme Lord is a different creation full of transcendental words directed towards bringing about a revolution in the impious lives of this world's misdirected civilization. Well, there it is in a nutshell. Okay? Cause a revolution in the lives. When you hear the glories of the Lord from a real bona fide speaker, it changes your life. Did it change oh, your life? Oh, it changed completely. completely. Completely changes people's lives. Everything. Life. That's how you know. You know if, if it's bona fide here, if this full glory is empowered, it changes lives. Hey, people are changing because it's, everyone else is misdirected by speculation. 
by even these in religion, in Vaishnavism, they're still more or less misdirected. Okay, they have faith in the name. But man, you're more or less misdirected. You're not completely on target. Here you get right on target. It's aimed at the Loka Vrindavan, at the glories of the Lord. And it's just natural. You come here regularly, you become addicted to this. I'm addicted. I'm addicted to the truth, man. And it just goes on forever. Forever. See? Otherwise, that is just, it's just you're spinning your wheels in more lifetimes, for sure. Absolutely. For sure. You come here, you can do it in this life. Sometimes even a few videos, you start everything kicking in. Changes your whole life. See, we got to match that Bhagavatam. If the empowerment here is here and the real guru is here, they are like the book. This is your reading about it. Here, here you see it in action, man. It's confirmed. You can have full faith. Look at this. This must be bona fide because it talks about a revolution in a person's lives, but you don't see it until it's in the book, right? Then you see a real guru, the real devotee Bhagavad, causes a revolution in people's lives. Now you know it. Now there can be no doubt if you listen long enough and get purified of all the, 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 uh, the, the cobwebs in the mind being around uh, unfavorable association. Okay? This is, you got to be around. You want to be delivered, you got to be around attracted devotees. You see, are we not proving that who, who does classes three or four times a day and then their students get so juiced up, they're out there doing them too. Who? Where? Nowhere. Zero places. Even in the Ryan Rogers group. Unless you're a guru and it's your duty to get up there and do it, put in your appearance. You don't see the students getting up there on Facebook and doing it. They don't have the potency. You gotta have the real potency. That's proof that the real potency is here. Potency is in the book. It has to be brought out by the real empowered devotee. The one that is chosen by the disciplic line to cause that revolution in people's lives. Take them back, take some people back to Godhead in this life. Okay, that's here. On the other hand, the literature which is full of descriptions of transcendental glories of the name, fame, form, pastimes, etc. of the unlimited Supreme Lord is a different creation full of transcendental words directed towards be bringing about a revolution in the impious lives of See, this... See, directed towards is the key word. See? So, Krishna acts according to time, place, and circumstance. See, this is what's directed towards a revolution is people have to learn the Bhagavatam as it is. You've got to be a real student, not a, a haughty one or a challenging one. You've got to hear from a real guru, man. See, this is, what was that word there, um, the last yeah. words you said? Revolution in impious lives of the world's misdirected civilization. No more, farther down. No, no that's where we are. You, Next is such, such transcendental literature. Yeah, you, okay. You I always you, take it to the top so I don't lose my place. Yeah, accepted by purified men. I didn't read that yet. Oh, right okay. Here. All right, so impious lives misdirected, such transcendental cause of revolution. Yeah, in perfect, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Forgot my thing there. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> so, yeah. Let me look at that again. Because there was something in there. There was a key word I mentioned. Fame, pastimes. Transcendental words are directed towards. Yeah, towards. Yeah, direct, uh, yeah directed towards. See, directed. See, so, the misdirected persons are the ones going in, the, in a different direction. Here, we're going straight to the kingdom, Okay. So there's always, if you don't have the real captain of the ship, captain, like we remember we read earlier, the captain of the ship is the bona fide spiritual master, the real acharya, okay? So if you got that, the captain of the ship, they're going to direct you see, in the right place. And, and for, with Prabhupada's preaching, it was Vaidhi Bhakti. That was the right place. Now, even by the order of Prabhupada, the right place is in get in the this line here because this is the real line the vaidhi bhakti line has imperfections okay? 
the, uh, f according to rules and regulations, still you're not worshiping the Lord in ecstatic love and getting this precise scientific knowledge. See, so there's always this murky stuff going on here. See, it's not clear everything. See, so there's going to be more or less misdirection there. So you got to be directed. So it's actually the will of Prabhupada, the will of the disciplic line, the will of Lord Chaitanya, that people now get directed into the kingdom of God. If you can believe this message by, I don't ask you to blindly believe it, come and listen, and you won't, it's not like it's going to, you know, wasting your time. Your whole life depends on it. Your life and death. Because if you get this and you really see that we're not just lying to you or bullshitting you or giving like an exaggerated opinion and you get this, then you've just saved yourself lifetimes. You saved yourself at least another birth and death. And it's painful, man. It's always miserable. Here, you, if you just come to the point of doing devotional service in ecstasy, then you're qualified to enter the kingdom of God and be with ecstatic devotees because that's what they do. But no ecstasy, no qualification. That's why the gurus are sent here and, and this is a really amazing time because now deliverance is here. Just like when Jesus was here, deliverance was an amazing time. He started it. You know, started the deliverance of, of people and still continuing. Because there are devotees doing ecstatic devotion. They still have their problems because they're not conclusive. They also need shiksha. But if you've got enough ecstasy, you just go to the kingdom anyway. We're here to help the Vaishnavas. Come to the point of ecstatic worship. And we got all these wonderful books to help them. So much conclusiveness. Such transcendental literatures even though imperfectly composed imperfectly imperfectly composed are heard sung and accepted by purified men who are thoroughly honest yeah you see that's that's another key thing thoroughly honest see honest means you got to just admit that this was like in Jesus' preaching. Is he, he saw the Pharisees were not honest. They were full of hypocrisy and desires and for material things and motivations and everything. And the poor, they could take the good news. They, they were honest. They said, you know, we're poor, man. We're suffering. You have a remedy. Get over here so people see you, man. You, they got to be. Yeah. Uh, you know, they, they admitted yeah, we're poor, we're, we're fools, all that. And they received the good news, and many of them entered the kingdom of God. Like Mary Magdalene, she was like that. She ain't coming back here. You know, she's, uh, uh, she was healed of these seven devils, and everything came out of her. She developed love for God, love for Christ. She received him, and he was born of the word. There's even a, uh, what do you call a gospel out there that they didn't include in the Bible because this is a patriotic society, you know. <laughs> yeah. So I forgot my point, what was it? <laughs> okay. Now I'm just thinking that even then they have this thing about women, you know, women. But what are they running after? Yeah. They're running after women. I mean, I see these Prabhupada disciples, 65, 70, 75 years old, and what are they still doing? Mm -hmm. Running after women. Mm -hmm. I see it. I hear it. I know it. You know why? Because they're not purified. They're no not. No taste. No taste. No taste. Yeah, see? And but that... they want to crush the women, just crush yeah. those women. Yeah. So that's the thing. It's just no taste. And that's proof in itself. It's not enough to just be a Prabhupada disciple, is it? Because mm -hmm. okay? if you have taste, then it's a balance thing. You may see a beautiful woman on there. Say, yeah, it's a beautiful woman and everything. But, you know, you got taste. You say, you know, it's like you wouldn't be, I got to have a, you know, because, you, know. you know, any sm intelligent, if you, that's the thing. When you, when you uh, worship the Lord in ecstasy, 
you start to say, yeah, you know, you're beautiful and everything attractive and all that. But you get involved in that, it's not so beautiful, is it? A lot of work, a lot of problems, all of that. Especially at an advanced age. Why the hell we want them at an advanced age, man? I've seen so many of these men leave their wives for younger women. And then they have another. No, mine did, and he oh. left me for an older one. Oh. <laughs> That's a twist. That was a twist. But she's a prophet cycle. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. So, uh, big difference. <laughs> big difference. So, and I see them, and there they are. They're strutting around with these young women, and, I, and automatically people say, oh, that must be your daughter. Mm -hmm. No, it's my wife. And I've seen them, I can't tell you how many I've seen. Mm -hmm. Go three, go four, two, three, fourth wives. Wow. And, and, and some of them are 65, 70 years old and giving these young people babies. Now, what's going to happen? Mm -hmm. What's going to happen to these babies? Their wives are going to grow up without a husband because obviously they're going to... We should make... imprison all those guys. No, right? no, I laugh at them. I laugh at them. I walk into them and it's like, oh my God, what the this hell are you thinking? <laughs> what are you thinking, you know? They, they need to come here and get a taste for Krishna. They'll change their whole way of thinking. That's the whole thing, man. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> no knowledge of self-realization, even though free from all material affinity, does not look well if devoid of a conception of the infallible God. Yeah, and it, that's another interesting thing. Because it's not complete. You know, I've seen the persons into that. You know, they, 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 there's misdirection there still. Because it's not complete realization. When you understand the personality of Godhead, and you can only understand by tasting relish, ruchi, tasting, bhav, praying. Hey, that's the only way you can understand the Lord. You, then you just, your, your intelligence expands. And you see, Lord, that's not, look at this, this is, not complete. You even get the ability, you can take, like I could take the Buddhist sayings and stuff and make it complete, make something nice out of it, where it's always like more or less misdirecting you. Like, you know, this thing, they say, oh, happiness is the way. Happiness is the way, the way. So that's not complete, Buddhist thing. Happiness is the true way. And people think, oh, happy, oh, let me just be happy all the time. But that's not exactly right. You know, that's kind of, it's like partly true. Because actually the Lord's happiness is the way. That's really the way. Is, is it, that's why we meditate on the Lord, to get his happiness and his transcendental sadness too and separation. This is our Lord we got. It's not just this, you know, thing. Because if you just try to be happy in this world, you're always going to be sad also sometimes. Because that's the way the nature of God is in the shadow, as well as the truth. Mm -hmm. okay? That's why Bhagavan realization is the highest realization. You get the complete truth. And then you don't say, oh yeah, just be materially happy, and that's the way. And then you think, oh, I'll follow that path, and then you still get sad. And you, Why? I tried to follow the Buddha, I didn't get it, but I still feel sad, what am I doing? Oh, try and work on being happy again. And you always say, so it's not clear teaching. Here we say, yeah, meditate on, on the happiness of the Lord. Meditate on Krishna. And you'll get the happiness and transcendental sadness of the Lord. It's all relishable. It's all wonderful. See, that's complete understanding. But you've got to worship the Lord like that. You've got to have that kind of taste. You've got to laugh, cry, get relish medals. Otherwise, you can't teach this. You can't teach real deep Krishna consciousness. You're just on the surface. This is more or less a show bottle thing, isn't it? Just a big show. So anybody that's thoroughly honest, honest means you could be a poor person in Krishna, rank and file devotee like her. She was not even a Prabhupada disciple. But she came here. She, 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 uh, she's open to the good news, to be delivered. Okay? And these Prabhupada disciples, not, because they think, oh, this is better to, let's see, not thoroughly honest. Okay? Honest means, you know, I got a bunch of pride, man. I think this is in my way. 
See, not honest yet. They think, this is not in my way, right? Mm -hmm. No, this is not my way. I kind of like this, man. I like these people giving, oh, you're probably disciple. Wow. Yeah. Maybe they're thinking they get a few young, cute chicks that way, too, maybe, huh? <laughs> <laughs> what else do they have to offer other than pride? <laughs> Knowledge of self-realization, even though free from all material affinity, does not look well if devoid of a conception of the infallible God. What See, conception. All right. That's the key word here. And we're going to leave this off because we're going to go take a walk to the beach and go for a swim. <laughs> yeah, conception. The conception. What kind of conception? A speculative conception? See, you have to have, if you want to be delivered, if you want taste, real taste, ruchi, excitement, you got to hear the truth as it is. It's very exciting to hear conclusive understanding of the Vedas. Hey, not just any conception, speculative conception. Why did Prabhupada say you listen to a professional Bhagavatam reciter? It's just like a, a snake with a valuable jewel on its head. You get poisoned. See, you change that conception. Prabhupada said, you change one word of my books, you change a lot of stuff. Hey, you... You got to, you know, this is the thing. This is the problem. See, devoid of a conception. Okay, they got some conception. That's something. Even Lord Chaitanya, we met these Tattavadis. They are like the ISKCON now. All that. Materialistic Vaishnavas, more or less. You know, they're only into um, the, um, like, Varnashram Dharma and, and rules and regulations. That was it. The Acharya was teaching like that. And the Lord said, the only thing I see in your Sampradaya that is actually good is you have a faith in the Krishna's name. And I say that same thing there. The only thing really, really good is you have faith in Krishna's name. See? Because, but, you know, it could be better than that. See? If you have a conception of the Lord as it is, it's very exciting, it's very juicy, it's very illuminating. And it causes transcendental experiences to awaken. The Lord is so pleased. If you can get people to listen here, the Lord is pleased with those persons just coming regularly. They'll start to have some spiritual uh, awakenings experience. You know, even a lot of times, even if they're really like, really like moochie cases. You know, Muchi, like caught up in name and fame and all that stuff, still Krishna will help them a little bit. Okay? It's amazing. You have spiritual experiences. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to, let's, let's end here. All right, Krishna, everybody, uh, look over here quick at the comments as I write it to the. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I'm looking at the comments here. Krishna mm -hmm. Prem, our new people, good. All right. Okay, thank you very much for coming, and we'll see you soon. Hare Krishna.